testing my new Bambi BB50D air compressor. I needed a new air compressor for my workshop extension. This is the one that I bought and it's perfect for the job. In the video series I am using it to supply compressed air to run a selection of steam engines on the bench. This first part features a World War II vintage Stuart Sirius from a generating set. First of all though I would like to take a look at the new compressor. And here it is sat under the bench, it fits perfectly. And I think for my application I have made the right choice. This has a 50 litre tank. It has two compressor units mounted on top of the tank and taking that into consideration it is fairly quiet. Not exactly silent, but quiet. Just in case you're wondering, that was not the sound of the compressor. It's the sound of my unborn granddaughter's heartbeat. I have three wonderful daughters and two of them are currently pregnant. That's why there wasn't a video yesterday because I was attending an ultrasound scan. To avoid any confusion, this is the real sound of the double Bambi compressor. Why did I buy a double compressor? Surely that's going to be twice as loud as the previous one? Not necessarily so. The air tank has a capacity of 50 litres, so once the compressor's pumped up to full pressure, which is 8 bar, I can switch it off and it takes quite a while to exhaust 50 litres for running small steam engines, as you will find out over this short series. To me this looks like a couple of green minions sat on top of a tank. I will try really hard not to paint these compressors yellow. Above the compressor on the bench is this steam engine. It is a Stuart Sirius and it came from a World War II generating set. So I'll just explain what that is. During World War II, the idea was to drop small steam generating plants to freedom fighters on the ground. And by drop, I mean using a parachute. The portable generating set was known as an Alco Firefly. I've never owned a complete set, and I'm not too bothered about actually owning one anyway. The Alco Firefly that I once saw had an aluminium boiler and it had a Sirius connected to a generator. Originally this engine would have been green but someone's painted it red and I actually quite liked it so I never repainted it. This is where you fill it with oil and the filler cap is complete with a dipstick. I haven't run this engine for a long while and there was a bit of water left in the bottom so I drained it all out and when I saw the state of the oil I'm really glad I did that. I left the engine on its side overnight to drain out all the oil. Then I replaced the drain plug and here I'm refilling it with clean oil. The oil that I'm currently pumping into the engine is my normal lubricating oil that I buy from a company called Hallett Oils. Before running the engine I'm turning it over just to make sure everything feels okay and yes it does. Using the drain tap on the manifold, I'm injecting some oil into the manifold to feed the cylinders. It's not steam oil, this is ordinary lubricating oil. I would normally use steam oil, but for compressed air, in this case, I'm using ordinary lubricating oil because this engine does not have any silicone piston rings, which can be affected by certain oils. I've connected an airline, and I've put a cable tie around the end, and now it's time to turn on the compressed air. At this stage I will mention that a Stuart Sirius steam engine is not self-starting because it just has two single acting cylinders. As I steadily increased the air pressure the engine started running by itself and it's running quite well. There's not much to see on this engine, the top part is a piston valve and the bit that's spinning round is a flywheel. I really do not think that these Alco fireflies were a particularly good idea for three fairly specific reasons. The first one being that it was World War II and the occupying forces did not want people going out into the woods late at night with Alco Firefly generating sets to generate electricity to charge the batteries on the radios so they could radio information to the Allies. And the second problem is this engine is not quiet. It's running quite slowly at the moment but it gets a lot louder when it goes faster and it would have to go fast to generate the electricity. The third and possibly the most significant problem is the smoke from the fire and the steam from the exhaust. Just the thing to give away your location visually. I really don't think they were successful. It was a great idea on paper, but if I was a resistance fighter, using one of these in the field would not be high on my list of priorities. 
What I'm doing at the moment is having a quick check of the oil level and yes it's looking good. The oil is definitely still oil coloured. What I'm doing here is putting some more oil into the engine just to make sure it's full because I can't decide whether the dipstick gives an accurate reading when it's sat on top of the filler pipe or whether the cap needs to be screwed down to get the reading. Once the pressure in the tank dropped from 8 bar down to 6 bar then the compressors both switched on again and because there are two compressor units the pressure soon went back to 8 bar and it switched off. Unlike the Clark Sh compressor when this one switched off it just made a click. I'm going to show a clip from the previous video showing the Clark compressor. I really did not like the escape of air when the Clark switched off. It made me jump every time. The Bambi compressor is currently pumped up to full pressure of 8 bar. And what I'm about to do is run the Stuart Sirius again without any narration. Well, not much anyway. There's one or two points I need to put across. The first point is that I've turned off the power to the compressor so it will empty completely. And so I can see how long this is going to take, I'm using the stopwatch function on my phone. This is not a very scientific test because I run the engine at different speeds, which obviously uses more or less air. The next part is heavily edited to get through it in a reasonable time. I'll be back at the end of the video. Well that's not bad, because most of the time the engine was running quite fast. 10.23. More than enough time to make any adjustments to the engine or just watch it work. My old Whisper compressor will run this engine for 10 minutes, but it gets very hot. I don't know how it's still working after 22 years. This is a much better idea though. A 50 litre air tank runs a steam engine for quite a long time. In the next episode I'm going to try a much bigger engine and see how long that runs for, just on the contents of the tank. Until then, stay safe, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.